everybody and thank you for watching. Um, our discussion today is called How to Make Real Money from the 2022 Boom. Um, now, my name is Jo Mulgrew and I'm the Managing Director here at HBXL and I'd like to introduce my colleague Simon Lazarus. Um, he's from the Better Business Group, um, a real regular to these um, hours. And we're absolutely delighted to share with you that Simon's joined Team HBXL as a business coach um, with three other experts in their fields uh, to help construction firms improve their businesses. Now, Simon is exclusively offering to HBXL uh, users the opportunity of a free coaching session uh, with him. Um, and we'll talk about that later to give you info on how you can um, book in. Um, as I'm sure off, off the back of today's session, you're going to be excited um, to speak to him. So, um, Simon, perhaps you could um, tell um, our viewers a little bit about your experience in construction and how you can help um, building firms. Yeah, hi, Joe. Thanks for inviting me back again. Uh, this is our seventh Power Hour now. Uh, I've been a mentor to building firms for 30 years. Wow. The Better Business Group was launched in 1995. And at that time, we were the first organisation to provide continual monitoring of builders. Uh, we're unique in that we work with builders on every quote that they do. Mm -hmm. We speak to their clients, we offer them free help and guidance and background checks on the other builders to help them secure valuable work. We find out why they win or lose jobs, who their competitors are, how they're priced compared and so on. Uh, we also give builders pre-vetted quality premium leads to quote on. And since 1995, we've monitored over £2 billion pounds worth wow. of residential work. We've helped members of the public to avoid using more than 4,000 road traders and we've spoken to tens of thousands of builders. So we have a unique overview of the wants and needs of both the builders and their clients. Uh, builders we work with are able to charge around 15 to 20% more with our help, and they win around 13% more of their own quotes into work. Wow, so uh, there's some, some big, big stats there, um, Simon. Um, so I thought we could start by saying um, we're into we're obviously into 2022, well into it, a quarter in now, and um, obviously the um, the pandemic um, has, I, I guess, to some degree, um, come to come to a close. Builders are feeling really, really busy. Um, they are booked up in many cases towards the end of 2022, and um, some into 2023 even. Um, so surely things um, are looking good for these guys, um, Simon. Well, in the current marketplace, there's undoubtedly loads of jobs to quote on, but there's also loads of cheap competition. Mm -hmm. To numerous builders every day, I see three major challenges currently. Mm -hmm. Firstly, the biggest problem builders tell us is recruiting and keeping a good team. A lot of the foreign subcontractors left uh, the UK in March 20. They haven't come back to the UK yet. And also a considerable mm -hmm. number of uh, subcontractors started on their own as there's so much work around. Right. The second biggest problem builders have is time. Working insane hours, often six or seven days a week, late into the evening or the early hours, resulting in a really poor uh, work-life balance. Mm -hmm. And the third problem, very important, is pricing for profit. Far, far too many builders are filling their diary with low margin work. They're locking themselves into a cycle of future recommendations that won't make them decent money. Yeah, well, I recognise a lot of that in talking um, to um, our HBXL building and customers um, that, you know, that that is representative across all firms right now. Um, and there's, there's a few big topics there, isn't there? Um, and perhaps we could unpick um, each one, um, starting with the team. Um, I know finding uh, good, good workers is, is a genuine problem for most right now. So starting with team. Okay, well, to retain a good team, you need to work for quality clients who pay a premium for a trustworthy and a reliable builder. Mm -hmm. They value quality as much, often more than price. Uh, typically, they or someone they know has used a problem builder before and they won't that make that mistake again. Mm. They understand that you get what you pay for. If you present yourself properly, you can win a job like this at 15 or 20% more than your current price. And that enables you to do several things. Firstly, it enables you to pay your guys more. That means you're not under pressure to finish your job quickly in order to make money. You've got flexibility to plan and manage the site. You can ensure the materials are delivered in good time and so on. The site's also more relaxed and it's productive. You can afford to space the jobs out a bit more to allow for unforeseen or for variations or to have more private time for you and your team. Do the maths. Uh, you'll end up with the year with far more profit for less work. The sites will be less stressful. Your team will be happier. They will want to work with you on your next job. It's a virtuous circle if you do this correctly. If you don't, then the building game is a really, really hard way to make a living. 
So um, just looking at some of um, my, my questions um, for you, um, I, I was just thinking that um, this is a hard challenge um, to resolve. And presumably, if you don't sort this one, then the other, um, then it's going to be really hard to address the other challenges. Um, then, absolutely. I mean, the guys watching this, they they work hard. They do a good day's work. Then they go and see potential clients. Then they work on their quotes when the kids have gone to bed. We still get copy quotes emailed to us at one or two o'clock in the morning from builders that work their prices out manually, not using software like yours. Yeah. Many builders at the moment are working harder than ever before, but they're making lower profits and we're in a boom time. It's mad. And, and all this puts pressure on your family life. There's no work-life balance here. It puts a strain on marriages with people. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you're working uh, ridiculously long hours and uh, for not enough money, let's be, uh, let's be honest, um, you know, life's, life's that much harder. Um, and again, um, we talk to a lot of builders um, at HBXL um, Building Software and we, we come up um, with this same um, issue over and over. Um, not enough time to do the admin, estimates are taking too long. Uh, no time to properly plan the jobs, um, scheduling, um, getting the materials, um, you know, to the to the right site on time, and so on. Um, and I guess ultimately, this busyness gives you um, a real lack of time um, to stand back and uh, look at um, what they're getting right, but often what's uh, what's going wrong. Um, and I'm going to say this, aren't I? Because I work for a software company, but um, in my opinion, going digital has got to be one of the most effective ways um, of buying yourself some time. Um, choosing software literally does literally uh, buy you extra time. Um, if you are using um, error-free and joined up and automated um, processes, um, particularly if you're sharing that information across across software and processes, so you're estimating to your health and safety, you're estimating um, informing a contract and so on, you honestly free up hours and hours. Um, time that you could be spending with family um, or um, planning for the future or just managing the business um, that bit um, yeah. better, I, I, I guess. Um, so I'm probably seeing some of your thunder there, Simon, that's things you were going to be um, talking Normally. about. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but um, going back to your three challenges, um, third on your list, Simon, was price. Um, you mentioned that the kind of jobs um, builders are going after just aren't going to make any, um, any decent money. Um, so is it in your opinion builders are needing to fundamentally address some pricing um, to turn their businesses um, around? What, what do you think? Well, absolutely. I think that's the fundamental point of being in business. So let me mm. give you an example of what I see regularly, okay? Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I gave a free mentoring session to a builder. We'll call him Peter for his anonymity. Yeah. He runs a small building company. Yeah. We spoke for an hour and a half in detail about his business. The limited company was set up eight years ago. Peter's on the tools himself and he works from home. He's got two young kids and he's got another one on the way. He's 35 years old. He works late into the night most days of the week. Not he good. desperately. Sorry, that's no, no. Really not a good situation for your family, is it? No, it gets better. Uh, he desperately wants to come off the tools and eventually he wants to do some developments of his own. Mm -hmm. He's been with, uh, let's call it a well known membership organization for six years. They only vetted him when he joined, they've never vetted him since. He does use a contract on every job. His first payment on a job is a week in or two weeks in. He then takes around 10 stage payments at different levels of the build. He leaves a good 10% or more at the end, plus often the, the variations that he charged at the end as well. He does a bit of commercial work and he's been knocked as a subcontractor. He hasn't been knocked on the residential side. Peter had a lot of inquiries in the last five weeks, 20 actually, in the last five weeks, okay. and he's struggling to win them, okay? He, he works his price out manually and it takes between three and five hours to do a quote. Yeah. So those 20 quotes, let's take a middle time, four hours, that'll take him 80 hours to price. And he can only do that in his family time during evenings and weekends. And he currently only wins one if, or perhaps even two out of 10 of the quotes he does. Mm -hmm. His turnover last year was around 850,000 pounds. I did a background check on him financially. Uh, the credit check shows that the company's shareholders' funds, that's the worth of the business, when he filed his last accounts at the end of uh, March 21, was only £4,000. So he's working all these hours and he's worth basically nothing. He's currently charging around £2,000 a square metre uh, and he's finding it difficult to win work. So last year, he reduced his percentage markup on his overheads and his profits 
to 10% each. Mm-hmm. He wants to charge more money, but he doesn't know how. The largest job he's done so far is about £150,000. Uh, he did over 12 extensions last year, and he known he needs to charge more, and he wants to charge more. And Peter's probably uh, working in a very similar way to a lot of the listeners today. Uh, he's a good builder. He works very hard. He's ambitious with a young family, which he spends far little time to, far too little time with. Mm. Uh, struggling with cash flow all the time, he takes a wage about ten months of the year, and that's when jobs go well and there's money left to pay him. Uh, so two months of the year, it doesn't work that way. He's getting lots of inquiries. He's winning very few, and he's had to cut his prices to win those few. It's just not sustainable. And if he doesn't make the change now. He'll still be on the on the tools in 15 years' time. Uh, he'll still be working for a wage only with no asset to sell or to pass on uh, and no pension. So you can see from the conversation I've had with him, we go in-depth into these businesses and we really go to the root of their problems. Uh, and I think it's very, fairly typical of a lot of people will be Yeah, I mean, that sounds very similar to, you know, an average age big sell software user, you know, that 12 extensions a year, that kind of turnover level. And, and what's so disappointing for all these hardworking guys and, uh, and gals uh, running these building firms, you know, to be worth just 4K at the, you know, at the end of the year, it's, it's a lot of slog and risk. You know, let's be honest, running a construction firm is, is risky, um, particularly in these turbulent times. Um, so uh, listening to what you're saying there, um, it sounds like pricing is his, is his main issue here. I can't quite work out from what you're saying. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to say he's not charging enough or is he charging too much? I don't know. Let, let's, uh, let's find out. No, he's definitely not charging, <laughs> just certainly not charging too much. You're making no money. Uh, Peter's yeah. business makes next to no money at all. Yeah, he's okay. got cash flow problems. Uh-huh. For some time the job's finished. There's no money left to pay him after paying his suppliers. And his sub is, they're all very happy. They're getting their money. Yeah. And so price is definitely his problem. He's not too expensive. He's far too cheap. And he's cut his margins to even get the business he's getting. So, unfortunately, mm. what we're seeing here is being a good builder on its own is not enough to make you successful. To, yeah. to run a successful building company, you have to juggle a lot of balls in the air at the same time. You need to be a good salesman, a good man manager, a good negotiator, a good accountant, uh, and a good overall businessman. Winning yeah. work is only partly about what you do. And critically, I think, uh, where a lot of builders fall down is they have to understand their competitors, what they're doing that's different to them and what is making them successful. And that's very difficult for people like Peter to find out himself because uh, people don't tell you the truth when they don't want to use you. Uh, but it's a big part of what we at the Better Business Group do as a business. You know, Peter's problem is he's a good builder, but he's losing out before he has the chance to prove uh, that to the client. He's winning one or two out of 10 quotes he does he thinks he needs more leads to quote on so they can win a few more jobs. And I think that's absolutely the wrong approach. He's already working ridiculous hours pricing the jobs he doesn't win. And my focus would be on the eight or nine out of 10 quotes he's doing that he loses. When we work with him, when we help him win one more job out of 10, that practically doubles his conversion rate. That's not just great for his business. That would be life transforming for somebody like Peter. Uh, he's cut his margins to the bone to win these jobs because the clients tell him he's expensive. That's just getting him off the phone. It's Mm. obviously not the reason his margins are far too small. Now, when builders join the Better Business Group, we survey their complete database of previous customers where we get GDPR permission. And if you have a look at this slide here, Mm -hmm. um, this is a survey we had back from one of our initial vetting references on a builder that joined us a couple of months ago. You can see the questionnaire is very detailed. Everything that the next customer might want to know we've asked the question already so we can prove it to the next potential customer. These surveys give us a baseline for mentoring the builder. Now, what you can see here is they've been graded perfectly on the quality of his work, his staff, the overall impressions of his business. But if you look at the top of the survey, the important part here, you can see that this was a £440,000 job. And if you, we ask how many uh, quotes that the client got, and as you can see here, the client got 18 quotes for this. 18? 18. 18. Oh, Not as unusual as you think. 10, 15 quotes yeah. very often, off the, certainly off the, rate, the, the, the popular rating websites. When we get surveys from jobs from there, they're getting huge numbers of quotes in addition to, to the bill that we're monitoring. Yeah. Uh, so 18 quotes for this job. If you now look at the second section, the reasons that uh, they chose the company, you can see that one of the main reasons for choosing it was his price. Mm-hmm. I mean, cheap. So my immediate thought is, 
Christ, how cheap have you got to be to be the cheapest of 18 quotes that the customer got? Now, he, this job has probably booked him out for six months of his working year to do a job that was underpriced by at least 15%. Pricing correctly, he may or he may not have won this job, but he would have replaced that time working for a decent customer and received probably an extra £60,000 in his bank account. I'd love an extra £60,000 in my bank account. I'm sure everybody listening yeah. to this would as well. For those of you that are trading, you know, it's a brand new transit van. Uh, yeah. So critically, you need to understand that the, what the customers are comparing you to when they say you're expensive. When customers tell us they're going to use a cheaper builder, I ask them to send me a copy of all the quotes and we offer them a free background check on the cheap guy. If we have a look at this slide here, yeah. this, this is, as it was, the quotes, a three-line quote, £89,000. Wow. With, with no VAT, that job alone would have taken the builder over that limit. So there's something seriously wrong there anyway. Now, I spoke to that client. I explained how we checked and monitored our builder. I talked him through our binding disputes resolution system, which protected him should there be a problem on the job. I pointed out the lack of detail in the cheap quote that left him wide open to being charged for extras during the job. We had actually a 50-minute conversation. And at the end of it, he gave the job to a better business group member for £150,000, including that. That's, that's quite a difference, isn't it? Sorry. It's £61,000 more, 68% yes. more than the cheaper quote. Yeah. Now, the point here is without our intervention, the client would have gone with a cheap quote. He'd already told our builder that it was vastly more expensive. So when that builder had to quote a similar job in the future, he, he would have been very tempted to quote a bit lower. And this is why almost every builder I talk to is undercharging by at least 15%. Mm. Every day, we enable builders to win jobs at higher prices. And this isn't about ripping the customers off. It's about charging the right amount to run a sustainable business. And it's all achievable, okay? This is another slide here. Um, this is a sample quote uh, from a builder that joined us recently. It was a £50,000 plus VAT job, just eight lines with no breakdown at all. Now, this sort of layout is identical to someone who, quote, probably £35,000 on that job, they'd get the job and then they'd engineer £30,000 worth of so-called extras. So when somebody tells you you're expensive, this is the sort of quote they're comparing you, you to. And, and over time, what happens is the business inevitably settles at a level that keeps the diary full but makes you very little profit. Yeah. Good builders are pricing too cheaply and making little profit. So when we do search on the guys that are even cheaper than them, it can't be good. Yeah. And these are some of the examples of uh, searches that we've done on cheap builders recently. So if you have a look at this first slide here, this one's always lost money from day one. And it was worth minus £93,000 when Why? I did the search yeah. last month. Okay. Here's another one. Uh, this one here. This company is losing £160,000. It's never made a substantive profit. And it was already losing £81,000 before COVID. Will these businesses ever be around to finish the project or return in a year's time to fix any problems? Would you trust your life savings to a company that's basically bust before you even pay them a deposit? Mm. Why would you take the chance? You know, we show yeah. these searches to the clients. They then realize that rather than my guy being an expensive builder, he's actually the right money to do the job properly and to stay in business and, and fix any problems afterwards. So the, these systems, they, they win builders work. And as I said earlier, Far too many builders are filling the diary with low margin work because of all these, these reasons. And rather than cutting prices to fill the diary, you should concentrate on moving your business upwards. So, so Simon, are you saying um, that it's the quality of the inquiries they're getting or they're not getting enough inquiries for, for the right kind of jobs? Um, well, I guess from what you were saying, you're trying to help them win more of what they've already got. So they might have some good stuff in the mix that they're already getting. It's not necessarily about marketing more and getting more, more leads it's in. Not. No, beg your pardon. Sorry, I just lost my place there. Um, no, I mean, most people are getting poor quality inquiries because a lot of them are getting them off the rated websites, which, uh, mm -hmm. as we've seen, get huge uh, numbers of quotes on that job. Um, and also, they're, they're certainly not charging what they're worth. They're, they're charging what they need to charge to keep their guys busy. But a lot of builders basically working for their suppliers and they're working for their subcontractors. Yeah. And as we've seen... With, with Peter, his business was worth £4,000. You know, he could have done one job, one decent job in a year um, and be much better off than that. Uh, so, yeah, they're, not, they're certainly not um, making the money they should be making. So I guess what we're saying here is that they're, they're decent inquiries, but they're not 
they're not quoting high enough and they're getting ruled out potentially for being being too cheap. Yeah, it's a, it's a combination of factors. Certainly, good clients are looking for a good builder and they know you get what you pay for. Yeah. Okay, so uh, builders basically need to take a, take a step back and think about the quality of work they produce. Are you really charging what you're worth? And the thing you've got to remember is any job you've ever done, they would have had a cheaper price from somebody else and they could have gone cheaper, but they paid more for you and your expertise. Yeah. But similarly, any job you've done, there are builders out there and you all know them that are far more expensive than you are. They're still in business. So this building business is not about filling the diary. It's about matching the right builder to the right customer for the right job. And it's about charging a price mm-hmm. that earns mm-hmm. the people here profit. So it's got a sustainable business here. Yeah. You know, if you're on, if you're on the tools, you're working from home, or you've got a family member helping with the paperwork, you're inevitably subsidizing the business by keeping your overheads low. By adding your profit markup or your percentage on a low cost base. In, in effect, what you're doing is you're passing the cost savings straight onto the customer rather than mm-hmm. keeping them for yourself. Yeah. And as the business grows, you will incur these extra costs and you need to take account of that now. Now, more established builders than you have got higher overheads. So when they add their 20 or 30% markup, they're far more expensive than you are. They're still in business and they're still winning work, so it can be done. Now, yes, there are loads of cheap quotes out there, but as we've seen, it, it's quite common for some media to be quoting below the cost of materials. Yeah. I'm sure everyone watching this has come across somebody similar. The point is we know that the job can't be done for that price quoted, so it never ends well for the client if they use them. The builder's problem is that these cheap builders are very good at point of sale. Now, you can either look down and try and win work on their terms by lowering your price, as Peter's was doing, or you can look up, prove you're worth the difference, and charge more. Every job has got a value, and you should price for the job. Chasing a uh, short-term turnover will not make you a successful business. All it does, it builds in future referrals at a very low margin. Mm. Uh, healthy profit is the only way to ensure you have a viable business in these uncertain times. And with the glut of work that's out there at the moment, it's definitely doable. Now is the perfect time to make these changes. So even if you do this uh, and you put a profit, profit margin on, are you still charging what the job is worth? Ideally, what you should do is go back, recost the last two or three jobs you did with the overheads for the business that you want to be in three years' time and see how much extra you should be charging today. If you don't, you'll never have the money to progress the business. And very importantly, you have to analyse each job individually and keep records to check uh, that the actual costs uh, were to see what the actual costs were at the end of the job. And if you continually underestimate, for instance, labour cost by 10%, then on the next job, cost it the same way as you would have normally done, but add an extra 10% to the labour cost so you come out making a profit at the end of the job. You've got to cost it right and you've got to analyse it properly afterwards. Yeah, I think that latter is, is 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 a big part of what is missing as well, and we'll we'll touch on that in a moment. And I'll be telling you about another webinar, guys, um, about um, um, about this. Um, it's an important one on cash flow, but w- which is all about obviously, uh, you know, managing uh, managing your finances better. Um, so it feels like there's three key factors then um, to successfully changing your business approach from what you were saying, Simon. Um, so. It sounds like one, there's a bit an element of uh, jumping in and having the courage to charge what you're worth. So yep. um, that's not ripping a customer off. That is charging your value and being very aware of your value. Um, you've obviously got to accurately price the job um, in the first place um, in order to secure um, a, a decent profit. And you've got to mind, manage your finances better, as we were just saying. So you've got to do these three things, have the courage, price it correctly, Add yourself a good profit margin. We'll talk in more details about how detail in a minute about how you calculate your profit margin and then manage your finances better um, throughout. So um, I think at this point it's worth us breaking down the elements that are going to protect your profit. And it starts with obviously the cost of um, the build itself. That's the absolute baseline um, build cost that you cannot quote below because if you quote below, you're literally just giving the client money. There is no point in you turning up on site um, each day. So you need an accurate pricing of the materials, the labor and the plan uh, to complete the project. Um, Get that wrong. And then every other calculation that we talk about um, afterwards 
in terms of adding overhead and profit and inflation. All of that is wrong. It's out the window. Um, so um, you need um, to get that calculation right in the first place. So I'm going to take this, if you don't mind, guys, um, as my first plug of the day uh, for Estimator Express. If you've got Estimator Express already, um, I'm sure customers will, um, you know, won't mind me saying because they're already using it. Um, but obviously using out of date square meterage rates um, um, or year old square sheets is a big mistake. So if you put your estimator express down for some reason and you haven't updated or um, upgraded recently, make sure you do. Um, the market is really volatile and we're updating um, the software um, literally monthly with the latest materials prices. Um, it is a continuous endeavor um, for HBXL. Um, in the past, the software was updated perhaps quarterly, quarterly with latest prices, or if you had a merchant link, um, it was updating um, as, as regularly as the merchant did. Um, but we now keep um, our price tracker and um, average um, updated um, monthly for all our customers with um, an up-to-date subscription. Um, so that's the first thing. And, and as a user, you'll know that Estimator Express accounts for every hour of labor, every nail, tube mastic, roof tile, they, they all count. And importantly, it's calculating wastage, wear and tear, your overheads and inflation. And we'll talk about what we should be doing with our overheads in a minute, because I know that Simon's got some more information on what to add in there. We do get questions from customers saying, well, what should I put in there? What should I put in there? Um, and also, what should I put in the profit margin cell on the software? What should I add in there? Um, but um, with, all, with, with that aside, we'll come to that in a minute. Um, the software is doing all that hard work calculating and estimating. Um, so you uh, use the software to do it, or you could even use the estimating service um, if you've got um, a bigger job or a more complex job or you're run over with work, because we can supply that um, estimation express file back to you so you can then manage the job. Um, and obviously, you're going to get that professional looking quotation um, at the other end of the software. So that's going to be really important in the clinching of a deal when it comes to um, a, a, a premium project that we're trying to achieve um, a win for. Um, and as we can see from or as we've been shown rather by, by Simon, when we've been looking at these quotes, I mean, I'm flabbergasted that somebody would spend this amount of money on just, you know, this kind of summary. You know, I'm a business person, I guess. But looking at that, you know, my life savings are at stake for this one piece of paper, you know. So if you're doing better than that, which I'm sure most of you are because you're an Estimator Express customer, um, you know, you should flaunt that. Um, and um, um, hopefully with some advice from Simon, um, you can, can premiumize your business. Um, so going back to overheads, because that's next on the list. Um, Simon, they don't come out of your profit margin, do they? You've got to have a, 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 a completely separate um, um, allowance um, for your overheads in there, don't you? Yeah, and this is a big failure of most builders. They don't allow for their business overhead. So they price yeah. these jobs relatively low margin, thinking yeah. they're making money all year round. Then the account does the, fi the figures and they, they make no money. Yeah. So, yes, you must allow for them. When the business has got no income or no work on, it's still got cost. Your, your bank balance doesn't stay the same as we found out over COVID. Things like your office rents, your admin staff costs, your wages, your van, your petrol, your liability insurance, accountancy fees, any loan repayments, all these type of things mm -hmm. are continuing to drain on your bank balance. And you need to work out a whole year's cost for this. You then divide it up to get a weekly overhead and you allocate it to the cost of the job. So if a job takes six months, you need to add in half of your annual costs. You then put your markup on top of this and you can put your markup on top of your labour, plant and materials to give your quote figure. And most of the listeners today will be surprised. These overheads are around, for most businesses that I talk to, 15% of their turnover. So if you're only putting 15 to 20% markup on the base cost of the individual job, in reality, you're going into that job aiming to make minuscule profits and that's if the job runs to time scale with no problems, which, as we all know, mm. that, there's no good news on jobs, only overruns and added costs. So what you then need to do is rerun that spreadsheet mm -hmm. with the added costs for the business that you want to be in a few years' time. So if you're working from home, add in a rented office, add in a, an admin person, their wage and their pension, add in the fact that you're off the tools and office-based with a regular wage and a pension add in a cost for a site foreman to replace you, an extra van, some extra tools. Mm -hmm. If this is the sort of business that you want to have, Peter's a perfect example, it's exactly what he wants to be doing. He's never going to have the money to do it, the wage charging now, money is business now. If you want to have this sort of a business in the future, you need to be charging this extra money today. Mm 
Otherwise, it will never happen. You can't just price each individual job with a tiny markup on. You've got to look for where you want to be. Now, the HBXL website has a link to get a free download of a costing template, or we at the Better Business Group can send viewers a copy, just get in touch with either one of us. This is really, really fundamental. Cost it as you are now, cost it as the business you want to be, and add those margins in now to your job quotes. Yeah. So that's effectively building up um, a business forecast. And so just to be clear, that's not about um, a job costing template. That's about business forecast, identifying um, all the costs that will go on, um, whether you have a job or not. And those add up quite, uh, quite surprisingly, um, um, to be honest. So that helps you kind of formulate, okay, what is the uh, base aspirational business, um, I think. Um, a lot of the time we all operate on how things are now, what we've got to do now, but we really need, as you're saying, um, Simon, to be looking up what is it, what is the business I want to be running and pricing for that accordingly now in order to enable that um, in the future. But anyway, going back to Estimator Express, we've costed the job accurately. Uh, you've included your wastage, your wear and tear, your overheads. Um, and um, alongside this, you now need to allow for inflation. Um, so some of you may or may not be using the inflation tools within um, the Estimator Express software um, already. Um, I'm sure we're all aware, um, you know, unless you've been sleeping under a rock, um, construction cost inflation is, is at its absolute highest uh, for a generation. Um, many factors. Um, material shortages, supply chain issues, labour shortages, uh, you name it, um, we're impacted, aren't we, at the moment? Um, and um, due to that current level of demand um, in terms of the consumer side, the homeowner side, um, uh, many builders, you know, they're booking jobs that are going to be starting several months down the line, maybe six, nine, 12 months is very common. Uh, and we're delighted to hear that builders are successfully winning work um, that far, that far right. But it does come with some some challenges, um, as you'd expect. So um, rising prices at the rate that they have been uh, means that even using today's prices, um, which um, you know, when you're quoting, which I should add is an absolute nightmare if you haven't got the Estimator Express price update going into your software anyway, um, nightmare to keep on top of. Um, the current cost isn't going to be enough by the time you actually start that job. So if that job is starting in three, six, nine months, as I was saying, by the time you actually start there and um, start the job, um, prices will have shifted under you again already. So it's really important to be thinking about not just the, the today price when you're quoting, but the job start date price. I can't get um, that over enough. It's the job start date price um, that's um, important. Um, so how do we do that? Well, my second plug for Estimator Express, so those of you who already got the software, yay, um, it's going to do the complex inflation calculations for you. And they are they are complex. You know, if you try and do them even in Excel, Microsoft Excel or something, it's a challenge. Um, so let's give ourselves an example. Uh, say you want to just start a job in, say, six months, and you tell the software the start date is in, in six months, so I'm saying it's starting in September, October, for example. It will add the cost of the inflation into your estimate. And say, say um, it was a six-month project. Not only is it going to be looking at the start date price, it's looking at the price increases that happen throughout that entire six-month um, project. So you'll have two things with your estimator express. You've got today's price and you've got the inflated cost price. And there's a report on that, guys. Um, if you've got estimator express, um, the inflated cost, the inflated sales price, in fact, um, it's called. Now that is gonna be the price to the customer taking into account not only the inflation getting to the start date of your project, but the inflation applied throughout that project. Uh, what that means is um, a, um, a bag of sa um, sand or cement is going to be at a different price on day one of the project versus, say, month six when you're doing the patio or something at the end of the project. Um, that same item is going to cost different amounts depending on where you call it off. So it, there is a challenge here. It's a mental challenge, a psychological challenge. The logical thing to do if we put our sentiments and emotions about it all to one side is to give the price to the customer based on the start date. Why on earth would you give today's price knowing it's going to be more expensive in six months' time? You're going to go into that job uh, making a loss. And um, this is the point that Simon is, is making. Um, you've only got so many precious days. And to walk into a job knowing that you're going to lose money is ridiculous. And I know a lot of builders don't use that inflated cost report. They don't like going near it. Why? Because when you compare yourself 
to another builder, one of these builders that Simon's got in, um, been demonstrating today that's putting in a one pager saying it's going to be 35K. Well, it's actually going to be 60, 70, 80K. You're going to look expensive. And I can understand that that might be a challenging quotation to hand in. Um, um, is that going to be palatable for the customer? But I would add, why on earth would you take that job on knowing that you'd lose that money? So, so don't. You've got to make that decision. Um, what price to hand in. Um, and as I've said already, longer jobs um, is even more um, of an issue. You know, if you've got a job going on into 2023, beware. So um, what I, I want to suggest is having a think about um, how you handle that quote of today versus the job start date um, price. Um, we know other builders are going to be giving in that cheap, that cheap quote. Your price might not snap stack up that well against the competition but trust is a is a long game how you present yourself and position yourself and how you add value how you as a firm add value so that you look the better firm the suggestions you make um the the observations on the drawings the um the look of your business the feel of your business your response time the quality of your communications and responsiveness to the client they all go together to substantiate this, this higher price. We've done loads of webinars on this kind of subject, Simon, so I won't go into it any more in any more detail, but your positioning, the way you position your business is everything. So have a, have a, have a think about that. And uh, you'll want to see, you might go further about the job price than you think with the right customer. So uh, finally, we're going to come uh, to the profit margin itself. Um, so if you've completed everything we've discussed so far, uh, your profit margin hopefully won't be eaten away by errors in your estimating, any mispricing, uh, um, and breakages, um, things go walkies on site because it'll have all been included. So Simon, tell us more about profit margins. We get this a lot in terms of what I should be adding as a builder to, to, to Estimation Express. Um, what yep. profit? Well, I just want to reinforce, you've got to go into the job with a really good profit margin, even in yeah. good times, you have to do that. It's, it's more important now than ever before. It's absolutely critical. As you said, there's only a certain amount of working weeks in the year. You've got to make every day count to fill the diary with the most profitable business you can. Yeah. So the first thing to say is forget about what price it comes out at when you add in all these future costs, because you still won't be the most expensive builder out there. Forget yeah. about these guys, as we've seen. They're quite easy to overcome if you approach them correctly. And you have to understand there's always going to be somebody doing a stupid price yeah. half of what you're putting in anyway. So you can never be the cheapest. It is pointless trying to be the cheapest. You've got to price to make money. End of story. That's what you're in business for. You're not in business to be busy and add value to people's houses at your expense. Okay. Uh, one thing I would say is try not to tender for jobs. Uh, any section that you're not the cheapest on, they ask you to reduce your figure. If you underprice a section or haven't allocated the cost between the sections correctly, you hear nothing if you underprice it. Uh, you only hear if you're higher than anybody else. The win rates on tenders is lower than on jobs you just quote for. Also, uh, a big problem is you, you must use your own contracts with your own terms that you're happy with. If you use a contract the client or the architect gives you, JCT or whatever, it's in favour of them and it will penalise you. Never agree to standard penalty or retention clauses. I had one uh, just last week. The client insisted on a £500 a week uh, penalty if the builder overruns. So I phoned the client up and I said, listen, my builder doesn't normally do that, but he's happy to do that, provided it's even-handed. Uh, he'll pay you £500 a week, or you can deduct £500 a week if he's over, provided that you give him an extra £500 a week if he's early. Mm -hmm. And obviously they're back away. You know, nobody's yeah. ever talked to them like that. Well, why not? I don't see why you should have a penalty clause. Um, if there's a 5% retention for every payment and at the end of the job, just assume you're not going to get paid it because half mm. the time you won't. Just add 5% extra to the quote up front. If you then get the retention, it's a bonus. Um, don't do subcontract work. You know, you if you work for developers or people doing HMOs, these are people uh, doing building work for profit. So they're looking for a good and as cheap a builder as possible. Work for residential customers direct. It's an emotional purchase. It's not a business decision. They're looking to improve their building conditions. They will undoubtedly pay more for a builder that they trust. Mm. But to get that extra money, you have to look and sound the part. Um, as for the profit margin itself, 
my view is you should calculate your cost. We've done a, a very detailed webinar on this price and profit masterclass, which you should have a look at. It's one of our best best uh, viewed webinar actually. Uh, materials plus plant plus labour plus very importantly your business overhead calculated that overhead with the cost the extra cost for the business that you want to be in the future. You then add, need to add unbelievably 25 to 30 percent on top of all of that which is probably far more than most of you are doing. By pricing that way, that ensures that the business makes money in a sustainable way. And trust me, you still won't be anywhere near the most expensive quote out there. These are the guys that are charging more than you. They're normally much bigger businesses with bigger overheads. Often they subcontract the work out to different teams. So the client gets a completely variable uh, quality of job depending on which team they use. You're probably doing a better job. You're on the tools yourself, a lot of you. So you're only trying to build your own reputation. So often... The quality of your work is better than these more expensive builders, but you're underselling yourself. So you need to have the confidence to price this way and you will do it. And forget the jobs you don't get, but you'll fill your diary with good profitable jobs. You'll earn money and you'll earn money when they recommend you. You're on the path then to having sustainable, proper business with retained profit that good clients will want to see. Yeah. Simon, I was just going to say, um, you know, going back to that point about courage and the courage to do this and to courage right, um, you know, to price properly. And um, I think this is where you come in. And um, I, have, I guess this, this has just occurred. So we've not talked about this before today's session, but um, the whole the whole premise of Simon kind of providing these uh, mentor sessions is to help give you the courage to do this and to talk to you how within your individual businesses, obviously this is quite a generic session that we're having today, but it's all about how um, to help you and your individual business make this move. Um, so, so Simon um, is offering that one hour um, session with you to start to talk about that and how that might um, affect your business. And obviously, you can, you can engage Simon Services if you want to help support you on that journey. But you don't have to do it alone. If you've just got that aspiration that this is what you want to do, that this, ses this session rings a bell and, and kind of all sets off some kind of a bit of a light bulb moment in your in your working life. Simon's there to support. Um, so we'll come back, as I said earlier, back to how you can book uh, some, um, some Simon time. So um, Simon and I have demonstrated that the actual um, inflation and profit margin calculations um, are really, really important. And we've talked about that in previous chats and you can access those uh, from the website at uh, Top Navigation. I think it's under useful information. There's a masterclass um, link. So all those webinars um, are there. I wanted to add um, another word um, on time before we move on, and um, that's your time um, and um, you as an overhead. Has my screen gone a little bit weird, Simon, just for info? It looks okay for me. Okay, I think my computer's just having a funny moment. <laughs> um, uh, my head has gone really wide, <laughs> so I'm glad you guys aren't seeing me looking like that. Um, but yeah, sorry, back to, um, you know, if you're not um, on the tools yourself, your management time um, is really, really critical to charge. Uh, you need to include your time, your management time at a healthy rate and some. Um, you're an overhead of the project, so make sure that your time is costed effectively um, within the project. Um, how many days do you start at the crack of dawn and finish late? Um, as you were saying, Simon, these 80 hours or so that some of these guys are estimating for, you know, if they're doing that in their own time, um, you know, that's, that's really that's probably what's that? That's at least two weeks' work. You know, yeah. if you walk in, a, you know, a normal person working, say, 40 hours a week, that's two weeks' work that you're doing in your own time, your home time, your family time. So charge the client your real time and at least get paid for it if you're doing it. Um, and definitely put a time allowance in if um, your client is bringing in subcontractors or suppliers themselves. Um, as, as no doubt, that's going to be wasting your time um, coordinating um, all of this. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, most, most of my guys actually charge 10 or 15% of the value of that subcontract work as a liaison fee. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, often they'll just use you for the job. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to be in control of that job. You don't want people coming mm -hmm. in and out and creating chaos. You're responsible for health and safety on that side as well. It's something to bear in mind. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, ponder, ponder on that one. Um, obviously, adding um, a decent um, profit margin to the job isn't the only way um, to, uh, to make that money. You, you've really got to manage the job effectively once you've won the job. And you could lose a lot of that money, as no doubt you know. Um, if you price it correctly, but then mismanage, um, you, if you're not in control um, of the day-to-day -day, um, of the site. So I'd say 
really boring as it sounds, you know, thriving and doing well in construction also comes down to processes. It comes down to some, you know, a level of administration. And as you were saying right at the start of the session, Simon, you know, you, these guys running their building firms, they're, they're, a, they're a man or woman of many hats. They're doing all sorts. And anything you can do, any systems and solutions that you can use to help you manage the project effectively is going to protect that profit. And SMH Express can help you with um, that. And I'm sorry, but that was my third shameless plug. Um, and if you have SMH Express already, make sure you use those reports and also smart scheduler within the software. That's all about getting your, you know, your game in order, what you need on site and when. When is it due on site? Therefore, when do you need to order it or book that person? So, um, so do that. Um, so you'll have automatic material schedules that you can give to your merchant. You can email them, you know, or print them out, whatever works for you. Um, that's obviously really important, not only for, for the delays and shortages, but if you're giving the holistic schedule to a supplier, they're more likely to, you know, to consider um, discounts. And I'm uh, teaching you guys to stack X because you do this all day, every day. But if you're giving those schedules piecemeal, you know, the, mer the merchant or supplier doesn't have a sense of the scale of the project. If you're willing to consider the, um, the bigger um, picture for the whole project by being organized, you're, you're more likely to get um, better pricing from your, um, from your suppliers. And of course, if you use the Gantt chart tools um, that are integrated with those reports within Estimator Express, that build program, as it moves, slips and slides, it then impacts all those um, schedules. So your profit forecast will get moved, just your cash flow gets moved, your plant and the materials and labor schedules are moved on. So you have a complete sense of where, where you're at. All those knock-on effects um, create admin, I realize, but you've got that at the click of a button. It's all done for you. So what we've been talking about today should reduce your admin time by, uh, by hours. And if you're partially using the software, make sure you investigate some of the other tools within the software um, that um, will, will help you. Um, that is going to give you more time to be going after the profitable customers and really thinking, um, you know, strategy um, about um, your business. Um, so I'm going to round up soon because I know I've, I've been talking a lot here, Simon, from my side. Um, uh, but I, I was thinking as well that a, a key stage to protecting your profit is the, pro the, the financial management, um, not waiting till the end of the financial year to find out whether you've made any money. I hear that a lot, um, you know, turning up at your accountants with a bag of receipts and invoices is a recipe for disaster. You know, you get surprised by a big tax bill or making less than you thought. You need to be in control of your finances. Um, I would suggest that you need your financial management information, if not monthly, quarterly. And uh, with that, you'll have the best idea of if you're headed in the right direction. And I would also suggest allocating actual costs to specific jobs if you're not already. Um, so each invoice, even if the invoice has to be split um, across a couple of jobs, if you've got um, one order going to a couple of sites, um, because if you don't do that, you'll never know what makes you any money. You know, it might be a certain type of um, a job that's actually making you more money. Um, an example, very briefly on that, was a, a building for a moment that I was talking to fairly recently. He did a lot of um, bargain basement um, landlord refurbs for um, student lets. He was running around like I don't know what to do with these. And he thought, do you know what? I'm, um, I, I am, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well because I'm busy, I'm really busy. But he actually found that just doing one or two extensions in the course of the year would have made him as much money as running around for some other landlord who was very tight and needed bargain, bargainous um, um, refurbs done. And obviously as well, working on that kind of project does not give you job satisfaction because you're using crap materials, excuse my French, you know, you, you don't, you're not doing a, you know, an amazing job because you're not being charged, you know, you're not being paid enough for it so you're in and out and you know um but have a think have a think about um the type of jobs that would make you money and do some comparisons because yeah this guy find out that actually it was better to do just a couple of extensions than running around after tens and tens of lets um so yeah allocate actual costs to specific jobs and if you're not sure how to do that or you just don't have the brain space and the capacity to even think about it one of our other business coaches from Camara Professional they're part of the Team HBXL crew um, who are designed to help support your business they can help you with it and we've got a session coming up um, on that and we'll be sharing um, those details on social media and email um, soon 
So we have hit you with shed loads of advice today. Um, we've talked for Britain. Um, so I think perhaps, Simon, we should round it up um, a little bit with a checklist um, and uh, I guess summarising effectively what Simon's advice would be to um, Peter, um, the, the guy we were talking about earlier, who is a real guy, we just substituted his name. He is not a fiction. <laughs> is. Okay, so we've got a slide here. So the first thing is you need to analyze, as, as uh, we were just saying, analyze your most profitable jobs. Stay focused on going after these jobs and only after these jobs. And just as customers carefully pick their builders, learn to recognize the cowboy customers you need to steer clear of. Keep a spreadsheet of all of your overheads. Don't overlook anything. Uh, and on this next slide, put that up. Okay, you need to uh, price the project accurately. The materials, the plant, the labour, include everything. Uh, you need to factor in wastage. You need to factor in wear and tear of your tools and your equipment. You put in your overheads. Ideally, the split of your listed overheads, or at worst, 15%. That's what most people tend to come out at. Uh, these costs don't come out of your profit. You can't ignore them. They're there. Peter cut his overhead down to 10%, which is a bit pointless because they still were 15%. You were just under costing for them. Uh, allow for inflation, both on lengthy projects and one starting in a couple of months' time or a few months' time. Allow proper profit margin. Ideally, you're looking for 25 to 30% above all of your costs. Uh, and on this slide here, run a tight ship. Uh, keep on top of your cash flow. Know your financial position at all times, preferably monthly. Uh, Project manage well, know where everyone needs to be, what plant is needed when, and what deliveries need to be made. Uh, if you're charging a bit more on the jobs, you can space them a bit more, you'll have the time to do this effectively. You can't do it if you're chasing your ass all the time. Yeah, okay? True. Do all these things and your profit margin will be fully protected, vault-like. Okay? Stay strong. Don't fall back on recommendations, quick wins, or gap in the diary fillers. All they do is sap your profit today and your future profit on recommendations you need to build a reputation for good quality projects working to the highest standards uh, with quotes that customers can trust no surprises okay I think we've got a right, see. yeah so um so i think i'm um, just on this side wrapping up um so we've got a bit of info on simon here so um simon thank you for sharing your absolute wealth of experience uh with us today and you survived through the session you uh, were <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so i have a good cough at the end of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so thank you thank, and thank you for watching guys and uh i hope you found um something of interest in this session if you've got any questions from the discussion, uh, please get in touch um, and uh, note and remind you that you are entitled to a free business review from Simon um, himself and um, details on the screen. Um, the business, uh, better business group, sorry, I'm getting my teeth back in. The better business group with Simon um, as a team HB Excel co coach are here for you and they can review your company free of charge, including feedback on your last six jobs, a one hour free business mentoring session to help you understand how you quote and uh, what to charge. And he'll help you um, define what your profit margin should be. And um, through this session, you'll get to know what your clients really think of you. And you'll find out what important changes you need to make to your business um, today. So I think a really valuable um, hour there with Simon. And I find that quite fulfilling as well. And we always find something that builders can take away straight away that makes a big difference to their, their businesses. Yes. Yeah. So do that, guys. Follow the links that we've just sent and book in. And also those uh, links, um, if you forget about it today but want to do that tomorrow or the weekend, those are also under the useful info um, about the business coaches um, with HB Excel. Um, so you can you can book in um, through, through to Simon on that as well. Um, and uh, if you're an Estimator Express customer already, but you want to know about the latest, you can also have another a, a, um, a demo, another online demo or a trial. Or if you're watching this sneakily as a non HPXL user already, um, you can um, also take a trial of the software and um, have a demo. So that's our contact info. 
And uh, finally, um, I'm going to leave you with the details um, of our next exclusive event for HBXL um, software users. We're going to be meeting with a, a gentleman called James Powell from the Kekmer Accountancy. Um, he's going to be talking to me about managing your cash flow better. Mm. All right. Um, we all know that cash is king. Obviously, profit is amazing, but sometimes it's a bit of a juggling act. And he is going to be helping us on the subject of cash flow in construction. So that's another good one. Uh, that's on Thursday, the 31st of March at 8 p.m. And um, I hope you can join me then. So, Simon, thank you again. Um, lovely to see Pleasure. you as ever. Great to be here. I'm looking cool. forward to the next one. Excellent. <laughs> Guys, book in with Simon. He's an absolute star, really easy to talk to, as you can see. Um, he'll have tons of advice for you and really gets, you know, what you're going through in, in your firm. I know running a building company can be sometimes be a bit of a lonely game, um, but, uh, you know, Simon will have your back. All right. Well, take care, everybody. Thank you again and see you soon, Simon. Yeah. Cheers. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers, guys. All the best.